Getting more sleep may sound like a dream, but my next guest says you really can make it happen. So today, healthy sleep habits for modern moms who need some rest. We've got Kristen Hodson here. She's a licensed clinical social worker and a mom. She's here with ways to help you get some extra Z's. Now more sleep, it's definitely sleep. a goal and we all want to achieve it, but is it something we can achieve now, like tonight? It is so doable, because I'm a big fan. I hear so many moms be like, Someday I'll get to the self-care. Someday I'll get some sleep because they feel like they're in a stage of life where they can't. And so these things are things you can start now. Okay, so you have a list of things that we need to do to lead up to better yeah, sleep. Yeah, and they can be baby steps. Okay, yes. so speaking of babies. All right, so uh -huh. what are some of those that you talked about? You say you need to follow your sleep cues. What does that mean? So if we look at the way we put our kids to bed, they often have a routine, like we get them in their jammies, we turn on the sound machine, we've got a story, and it starts to cue their brain, like, oh, it's time to start winding down. And these are habits that are, all the experts agree, that getting into, they call it sleep hygiene. Okay. Thinking of it as healthy hygiene. When we do that for ourselves and we start getting into our routine and rhythm, even if it's a small cue, whether you spray lavender on your pillow, you go wash your face or put cold water on your face and you make it a ritual, it starts to clue our brain of like, oh, we're turning off for the night. And so that truly does make a mental note, a mental habit as you it do does. these things that tells your brain, hey, time to stop thinking and let's mm -hmm. go to bed. And when you build it in with some of these other strategies, you really do start, start to set yourself up for quality sleep. Okay, so we're kind of talking about habits here, but is this something that can also be take a, a more quick effect for, to, to get into place and for us to fall asleep? Yeah, it, it's something that... Really, if you changed one of these habits, such as when we talk about the cell phone, that can change it that night. Okay, it can be so speaking of this, the cell phone, um, what are some of the, the difficulties that come with having our cell phones right with us as we're trying to go to bed? So I know for me, sometimes I lay in bed and that's the only time I have and I catch myself just scrolling. And before I know it, 30 minutes has passed, 45 minutes has passed and I'm really tired, but my brain isn't shut off. And what the research shows is that you need to turn that phone off 30 minutes before. But it's, I, I saw a mom that's like, what I'm doing right now to get my sleep is I'm posting, not scrolling. Okay. I am just going to go in there, check in, say hello, check out. I'm not going to scroll. So if you want to check in, go check in and then be done. Put it down. Okay. Could, could, would it even help if you did like a last post, like good night post with uh -huh. a picture of your final thing of the final day? Thought. And then that will kind of cue, okay, now it's sleep time. Absolutely. And for moms that do just want to scroll for a minute, set your timer. You can multitask that. Set your timer so that you're like, oh, 15 minutes has gone by like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we talk about more sleep and, you know, making sure you get to bed, have this routine, but how do we improve the quality of the sleep we're getting? So that goes back to the, the phone. There's a, the light that's on our cell phones makes our brain more alert and it makes it harder to turn off. And so if you, com if you uh, combine the sleep hygiene and get in that habit, you leave your phone. I tell a lot of moms, don't even bring it in the room with you. It's kind of like putting the baby or the child outside of your room so you can sleep. Put the phone out there so that you don't hear the buzzing. And, and put it down at least 30 minutes before you go to bed. Okay, at least. so we do have a time frame that we want to stick to. It's, you don't you know. want it to be the last thing you do before you close your eyes. That can disrupt the quality. And by all means, if you do have it in your room, turn off all alerts. Like, turn those off. See, this is a real self-check for me, as I'm sure for a lot of women it's out hard. there, because the cell phone's right by my bed, and the last thing I check. Yeah. Okay, so if cell phone's not an issue for us, though, uh -huh. and we're one of those that lays in bed, and our mind just starts swirling, and oh, our to-do list keeps getting that bigger. That is so me. Yeah. How do we combat that? So keep, I like, because uh, my brain does turn on with that, and I start thinking about tomorrow, and all the things I didn't get done today. So have an, again, so it's not on your phone, have a notepad and pen, and do a big brain dump. Dump it all out because sometimes what we'll do is I can't forget, I can't forget, I can't forget. And then it just keeps our brain. So get it there so you know it's there, you won't forget and you can let it go. And how do you feel about daytime naps? Oh, I'm I love hoping them. you feel good I about them. them. <laughs> I do. And but the thing is, I think everyone should have them, but um, even if you're resting, so don't scroll during that daytime nap, but power naps. You don't want them to be longer than 30 minutes. That's the restful sleep. And one of my friends who actually does the KSL Mom Show, she posted her daytime nap, and I'm like, this is brilliant. She went and got the sound machine and turned it onto the waves, 
went over by the sunny window and she's like, I napped like I was at the beach for 30 minutes. And I was like, oh, that is, that is brilliant. A idea. So the 30 minutes and even if you're just resting, that can also do good for your brain, even if you're not able to fall asleep. Is there a time in the day that's kind of that best time to nap or are we just trying to listen to our body as far as listen when it's to our bodies? Because for some, they may start the day really early and they need a snoozer around 10. I know for others, the witching hour, they can tell what time of day it is by how their body, if you can somehow get 30 minutes, that's, that's great. Now, as far as new moms go, should they try to get more naps during the day or more sleep in general? The rest, it's always a good thing. Again, the more sleep or rest the brain has, the better we're able to manage moods and emotions and overall just be able to give more. So getting in these bite-sized power naps is really good. Is there a time we shouldn't nap after because it will affect our sleep later at night? Or? Um, not necessarily. And the thing to remember, though, is if we're not getting good nighttime sleep, doing the long naps during the day, it doesn't make up for the lost sleep in the night. It's just helping us kind of get through the day. So that's important to remember, too. Okay, and what about kids? I mean, we try to get our kids down for a nap, but is that kind of a good cue for us moms to, to try to, okay, let's get the kids down for a nap and then I'm gonna take a nap. Is that a time to match that up? It can be. Some moms will take that advice and they're like, all right, nap when the baby naps, fine. But that's my me time, that's my time. That can be the scroll time. If you can have that be a cue, great, or it can just be rest. Thank you so much for the advice. And, uh, you know, I think we all can use a little more Z's <laughs> in our day and our night. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me.